Hey what's up guys, Alex here, back at you with another orchestral tutorial and today we're going to analyze this thing I'm working on. I'm gonna play it first and then we're gonna, yeah, I'm going to explain to you about staccato strings. So uh, it's kind of loud so be prepared, playing in 3, 2, 1. So that's that. So uh, for those of you who have a nerd culture, yeah, this is the Final Fantasy VII battle team. I'm trying to uh, do an orchestrated version of it. But yeah, so today I want to talk about string staccatos. By the way, you have to forgive me if the quality of the microphone is shitty or if there's echo, but I'm not in uh, my apartment right now. I'm in an Airbnb apartment with my laptop. So, you know, I don't even have my webcam here with me. So. That's why you're not seeing my face on this video. But anyway, without further ado, let's get into the staccato strings. I am making a tutorial about this because, as you might know, like I make, um, I provide paid feedback and supervision for music for uh, beginners who sometimes send send me tracks through my website, and I give them directions and pointers, like very detailed pointers on what to improve and how to make the tracks to sound uh, makes the track sound good. And one thing I notice more often than not is that their staccato lines or their you know they are ostinati that's what you call a staccato spa staccato patterns ostinato their ostinato patterns are not um they, they do not sound much interesting or much energetic and why i thought like this like the, the way to like it's quite simple to understand how to write um you know um convincing ostinati it's actually not you know so i thought of making this tutorial <laughs> I, I mean i noticed it's not that easy to figure it out but uh, yeah, I thought I'd make this story to help people out who might need this type of knowledge. Maybe you know it already. Maybe you're already able to write stuff like this. If that's the case, like this is the only thing I'm going to talk about in this tutorial, so maybe you can, uh, you know, uh, go on. But if you're oblivious on how to make your staccato strings sound good, this is the right place for you. So uh, let's analyze this by going um, bottom up so uh, the thing you hear here is the main melody you know when, when you first hear this um, staccato this ostinato you tend to hear the main melody pam 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 but there is much more beneath it and I'm going to show you how I you know how I got this result starting from the very core of it so we're starting from the melody so as I said like this is what the melody sounds like sorry um, let me first isolate this so this is what the melody sounds like and these are already the accents and um, what I did is I took this and I doubled it so I placed it on another um, string instrument like we have it on the violas I placed it on the second violas as well and I put it at a higher octave so in such a way to cover more um, frequency range or to make it sound more rich but still this is what it sounds like sorry which uh, if we take the whole orchestra beneath it and we make it play together maybe it would be pretty much okay but sounds okay because those strings are defining the accent on which the whole orchestra is playing below them so it sounds pleasant but still kind of bland especially when you when you play it like if we play this with the percussion instead you're going to notice there's something off and 
what beginners tend to do is uh, they tend to think, okay, so what I need to do is to make this much more rich and make it sound more powerful. Powerful. So I'm going to add more octaves, and that's not the right way. A cool, like the, the what you need to add to your uh, staccato sections to make them sound amazing uh, are actually like there are three dimensions you must consider. The first is accents, which are this, like uh, if you have a melody or even simply. Um, Maybe you have a chord progression, you know, some chords playing. The first thing you want to lay down is the accent in your ostinato pattern, and that's what we did here. It's still not enough though, because the second thing you want to add are accents. And if you checked out, sorry, the second thing you want to um, add are syncopated notes. And if you checked out my percussion tutorial, we're going to um, notice a redundancy. And that's the cool thing about orchestration is that if you learn to orchestrate for a certain type of instrument, that knowledge you can apply it to other stuff as well sometimes you know so uh, the rhythmic knowledge that i explained to you in the percussion tutorial if you checked it out we're going to use it in here as well so uh what we're going to do like, like what i did next is add syncopated notes so with the syncopated notes i'm not sure what the exact definition of syncopation is sorry <laughs> but um the way i view it is pretty much notes between accents so what i did is i added triplets between the accents accented notes we heard before so they sound like they sound like this and it's a simple trick but it makes everything sound much more energetic so now a, a, a cool thing like a, a thing you should keep in mind about syncopated notes is that ideally you want accent to still be distinguishable from syncopated notes so what i did is i added those notes with different velocities instead of doing something like this like blasting velocities to the max like this like if i did this you couldn't distinguish the accents from the syncopated notes so i decided instead to um, use different velocity levels you know and that's a cool way to to even define a rhythm much more you know other than adding syncopated notes, adding them with different velocities and variable velocities, make the velocities vary in a, in a pattern um, like this, helps a lot into building that rhythm, into building that, that oomph, you know? So now we have the syncopated notes and with the percussion, they're going to sound much more all right than they did before. <laughs> So, right, so we have covered out rhythm, but it still doesn't sound that broad, you know, especially because like in the orchestra below it, uh, if we play it alone uh, without the strings and without the percussion, you're going to notice this, there's quite um, some flaws or some, not flaws, but holes in the orchestration in terms of frequency. And this is something I always mention in my tutorials, by the way, the frequency range, because I want you guys to really... Um, give a shit about it you know because it's the simplest way to figure orchestration out that's if you analyze the frequency range or the frequency spectrum it's, it's the uh, the fastest way to check out or to understand what's going on with the track to understand what lacks or what your track needs less of so this is what the frequency range looks like for the orchestration <laughs> we have a huge lack of bass and you know and throughout it's uh, it's quite thin it sounds thin because the frequency spectrum is not that much distributed you know it's not that full you know so um what i did in the string ostinati is i took care of that by adding different voices which is the third dimension the first is accent the second is syncopation the third is voices or harmony you know when i mean voices um if you checked out the string tutorial i made in the past the one about sustain strings you know already I tend, like, generally, I tend to write music, orchestral music, by not using ensembles, like, ensemble patches like this, this one. Sorry, it's not playing, but yeah, I do not <laughs> use ensemble patches, but rather I use split patches for every single instrument in the instrument family. So I have patches for second violins, first violins, violas, cellos, etc. This helps me, helps me into thinking, instead of chord, thinking about voices. And with voices, I mean stuff like this. So... We had that syncopated um, pattern before, and I added this thing here to that pattern.
this is different from what you heard. This is not like ba 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 ba. It's another voice. We can consider even we can even consider it a counter melody. And maybe I'm going to make a story about, about melodies and counter melodies another time because it's an interesting thing to figure out uh, in terms of uh, you know learning how to compose music, especially orchestral music. But yeah, that's not what we are talking about in this tutorial specifically. So um, voices. So uh, what I did is I took what we had before and I added something else to it, you know, and this voice here is following the same accents, pretty much the same rhythm even of uh, syncopated notes, but you know, um, it's changing pretty much independently, independently from the others. So when we play them together, you're going to hear that, that the, um, there's the, the, the violas and the first violins, which are playing the same thing I showed you before, but there's this new viola voice, which is doing its own thing. And the cool thing is that it's not contrasting the other first, because they're in the same key. So they are pretty much harmonic together, you know? And second, they're not overlapping too much in terms of melody, you know? The, 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 the notes, sometimes maybe they play the same notes, but at different octaves, and sometimes they play completely different notes. And, you know, uh, while they are playing different notes, they are still playing the same rhythm and the same accent. So they have an element that makes them diverse, but also elements that make them sync, you know? And that creates um, the sense that they are not that discordant. So when we play them together, you're going to hear that. They are not like disturbing the other too much. They are building something together, you know? And that's one cool thing you can do, add different voices. So that's what I did. And I did this to, again, make sure that the, um, the strings reach a very broad range in terms of, of frequencies, that reach a very broad harmonic range in such a way that they will feel, feel sorry, the orchestra um, beneath them. But, you know, what we have here is still not broad enough so when we play together with the orchestra we're going to notice like there are still that a bit of holes I mean it's better than this but we're still not there yet so uh, what I did is add even more voices and the spectrum of frequencies tells us exactly what we need here and here, there are huge holes, so we need more bass throughout. So what I did is I took the two um, string instruments I still ha hadn't used to that point, which were first the cellos. And for the cellos, I decided to add another voice again. Instead of just, you know, taking the same voice that we had and putting them at a lower octave, I decided to add a different voice. So another, you know, uh, melody, so to speak but with the same thinking in mind, same accents, same rhythm, and um, I tried to make it independent from the other voices, but there are some parts in which they uh, change at the same rhythm. So they are independent from each other, but in some parts they come together. And um, so yeah, let's hear the cello so I can explain to you better what I mean. So this is the cello voice, which I added to the whole thing. So, uh, again, this is, a, this is a different voice, and when we put it together with the others, this is what they sound like together. And you see the, the spectrum of frequencies is getting much more broad, much more complete, and that's a good thing, because it's going to make our orchestra sound amazing. And, uh, okay, so we have this. But I decided that I want even I wanted even more bass, and I had hadn't used double basses yet, so I had that chance, you know, I had that instrument that could provide what my arrangement lacked, the double basses, and so I added another voice again. Um, but I think this um, is not that much different from the others. I, I don't don't remember don't remember honestly, but yeah, it's a pretty much simple voice, and it's the bass uh, voice put on the double basses. 
And a, a thing I should mention is that when you're using double basses, which are, are an instrument with a very low register, you want to avoid using it, like writing too fast uh, notes for them, you know, because they have such a big low end that, um, you know, in general instruments with uh, a huge low end like that, with a low register, you want them to not be too much action packed because they can create mud in your mix if that's the right way to put it. So instead of having the same exact rhythms, same exact syncopated notes for the double basses, what I did is I only played the accent, but I also used one syncopated note. So uh, this is what the double basses sound like. So that I pam pa pam pa pam pa pam instead of pam 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 pam, and that helps into uh, making them less invasive, and in making the accent much more, uh, even much more noticeable, because the accents are the only part of this pattern where you can hear that low end booming, you know. So it gives them that ultimate oomph that <laughs> the strings need. And then after that, I did some humanization, so I randomized the velocities a bit to make them slightly different on every single note. And the final result is this. Sorry, let's see the strings alone. Now we have a much more huge and broad frequency range compared to this. And it's even more like it's even more broad than it would be if we took the same exact notes and placed them on different octaves, you know, because uh, the different voices are going on like uh, it's weird to explain. But yeah, when you're playing multiple notes together and you hear pretty much what they're playing is chords together, you know, every single voice is independent, etc. But when placed together, they're playing chords. And when you play chords, you tend to reach a broader uh, um harmonic range, a broader frequency range for reasons, which I'm not going to mention in these tutorials, but you get the idea. So uh, that that's a cool thing to do, you know, adding different voices like that. And it helps you into getting a broader sound. So when we put all of that with the orchestra, you're going to notice now everything is going to sound much more full. compared to this. It, it's interesting because the rest of the instruments pretty much stayed the same, but when we play together with the whole orchestrated ostinati pattern, even the rest sounds much bigger, you know? And this is one of the psychoacoustics uh, of orchestration, I guess, you know? And then we added percussion, which uh, percussion here are useful because they uh, reach the high um, the high zones of the frequency range. So even the percussion field, that space. And together it sounds like that. Then again, the mix is what it is because uh, I haven't mixed this yet. I'm not even done arranging this track, so yeah. Uh, about mixing, by the way, I think I'm going to make tutorials on mixing or on orchestral mixing in the future, so uh, stay tuned for that. I know I haven't made a lot of tutorials in the past, and this is not the first time I say this. Like, there have been a few periods where I haven't been so much active on YouTube, but it's, uh, yeah, it's kind of difficult to, <laughs> you know, keep it up, you know, uh, keep up my music composition education to get better at composing and also keep up your education to you know to, to make tutorials for you guys at the same time and uh, you know so i'm still trying to figure out a nice um rhythm or nice interval between the two but yeah my ideal goal is to at least post a tutorial a week on this channel and if you're new here uh, you might want to check out the rest of the channel already because there are lots of tutorials i made in the past and you might want to subscribe because i'm making lots of tutorials in the future as well and as I said, I want to make a tutorial on orchestra, uh, sorry, on mixing orchestral music. I'm thinking of making a, a single tutorial on every single mixing uh, unit. So, for example, one on equalization, one on compression, one on, uh, I don't know, uh, <laughs> spectrum analyzers, one on uh, mastering, maximizers, blah, blah, imagers, you know. 
there's lots of stuff to, to talk about and lots of stuff I still need to study myself actually so uh, yeah I, I think I'll make those tutorials in the past and for now let me know if this tutorial taught you something about staccato strings you know if you learned something let me know in the comments if you have questions or clarifications you need just let me know in the comments ask me away ask away and I will answer and also if you want to learn more about orchestral music do check out all the time like I like I mentioned all the time the Avenant courses like the link to Avenant is in the description of this tutorial and if you don't do not know them there are guys who are friends of mine who make courses and by the way I think I will make a course for them in the future as well and they make courses about uh, orchestral music cinematic music trailer music and you might want to check those out because because they are very packed with information about how to write this type of music so those really help you if you want to learn faster you know they come at a cost but it you know it's a good investment to make if you're serious about developing a music composer career but yeah this is all for this tutorial i hope this helped you out it's been a while ever since i made a tutorial so maybe it's, it's a bit quirky compared to the rest of my tutorials i released in the past but yeah uh i guess that's it for today alex out